Good evening, I am Jack Fuji, and welcome to the second session of Agriculture 194, what is it, X, Focus on Agriculture. Focus on Agriculture is a one credit course offered by your College of Agriculture, Forestry, and Natural Resource Management here at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. And we come to you live every Thursday evening from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here on the University of Hawaii at Hilo campus. For those of you who just joined us for the first time, uh, Focus on Agriculture is a course to inform you about the various aspects of diversified agriculture in the state of Hawaii. But uh, the cooking class has been so popular that we have uh, repeated the cooking class where we invite local restaurant uh, chefs to prepare various dishes for you, emphasizing local agricultural commodities. Before I go on, I'd just like to make a few announcements. One, if you have not received or if you do not have the course syllabus, uh, please make sure you get a hold of me. And if I could have the Elmo, please. Uh, you can get a hold of me several ways. You can get a hold of me by mail at uh, University of Hawaii at Hilo, College of Agriculture, Forestry, and Natural Resource Management, 200 West Kawili Street, Hilo, Hawaii, 96720-4091. Or you can get a hold of me by phone at uh, area code 808-933-0850 or by fax at 808-974-7674. And for those of you on email, you can get a hold of me at jfujii at hawaii.edu. All the course requirements are on the uh, front page of the syllabus, and the second page has the uh, list of various sessions that we will have throughout this coming semester. Uh, I believe there are 15 sessions altogether, and this is the second uh, week, the second session of the semester. Also, I would like to say a few words about the College of Agriculture, and if I may have the ELMO. The College of Agriculture, Forestry, and Natural Resource Management has a specialization in animal science with uh, a program in pre-veterinary medicine. We've sent many of our students, or our graduates, to veterinary schools on the mainland. And we also have a production option within the animal science program. For those interested in the business aspect of agriculture, we have an agribusiness specialization. And another uh, specialization is the agroecology environmental quality specialization. And also we have an aquaculture program, primarily freshwater uh, aquaculture. We also have a area in crop protection. And for those who do not know what they're going to go into in agriculture, we have a general agriculture program. And finally, a tropical horticulture uh, program. And we are also trying to develop a forestry program. At the present time, we have a forestry certificate. Since we are coming to you live at approximately 8 p.m., those of you in the viewing audience and, of course, those of you here in the studio can ask questions of our guests this evening. So jot down your questions and uh, at approximately 8 p.m., you can ask the questions of our guests uh, or, or our guests this evening. Um, we have this evening uh, the um, Canoes Cafe here in Hilo. And uh, I hear that they moved to a new location. And my guest this evening is Randy Boddy. And uh, he will inform you about uh, where, the new locations, uh, where the new location is here in downtown Hilo. So I hope you don't change the channel. We hope that you'll stay with us for the next hour and a half. And uh, make sure you give us a call at approximately 8 PM. The numbers will be on the screen. And I'm going to turn the class over to Randy. So, Randy, why don't you take over the class? Thank you, Jack. It's my pleasure to be here uh, for the third time. It's been so great to actually show uh, the agricultural things we have on the Big Island, which is phenomenal. And I want to add something to what Jack said, is don't only not change the channel. Call your cousins and your grandma and auntie and so-and-so and tell them I'll watch, too. So, you know, I know we're getting across the state with this show. It's wonderful to actually show what we have to offer in the Big Island. 
Uh, it's a wonderful place to have a business and it's a wonderful place to live. Uh, we have specialties that we can get hard time getting back when I'm from Oahu originally. I'm going to make six salads tonight. Uh, at Canoes Cafe, we have a very diverse menu. We're a small cafe that specializes in deli style sandwiches. We do pasta and potatoes and we've had salads since the very beginning. And um, really to focus more on the agricultural aspects of what we do, uh, I'm going to make six different salads and six different salad dressings this evening and um, try to use all different ingredients um, using basically very similar uh, little vegetables on top that are going to um, add to what the main ingredient is, but the main ingredient should, should speak out. And then the dressings essentially shouldn't overpower, but should add a good diversity of flavor to what we do. So um, the first one I'm going to make, I called it the Tropical Grilled Ahi Salad. And it's going to be with a uh, mango vinaigrette dressing. And uh, what we're going to do first is make the dressing. And I'll go through all the ingredients, you know, at a good pace here. And you can take notes and if you want to get started on it right away. Otherwise, you can wait till the recipe book becomes available. Um, just one note for Jack on the recipe that I turned in earlier. It's teaspoons and not tablespoons on those three main ingredients there. The granulated garlic, the white pepper, and the salt. So I pre-measured some of my ingredients here. What I'm going to start with, first of all, is I'm going to heat this uh, grill pan over here to a nice high temperature. And it's a good way to actually grill something inside without having to go outside and fire up the hibachi every time. And this is a cast iron skillet that has um, nice grill ribs in it. It has really nice grill ribs in it. You get it nice and steamy hot. It gives a good grill mark on your uh, product that you're cooking. And I'm going to do it with some ahi here in a second. So I want to get that nice and hot so it gives a good flavor, a good grill mark to the to the ahi. Um, the ingredients I have for the salad dressing is very simple. I have two-thirds cup of rice vinegar. Rice vinegar is like this Mitsukan rice vinegar here. I like uh, rice vinegar because it's a lighter, crisper flavor than uh, maybe a red wine vinegar. It just uh, doesn't overpower so much and gives so much of a vinegary taste. Um, I have my spices here. In here is a teaspoon of granulated garlic, a teaspoon of white pepper, and a teaspoon of salt. Granulated garlic is something rather new on the market that you can find that is an option instead of having to dice up garlic every single time. Uh, garlic powder is hard. If you live in Hilo, you know that garlic powder turns to little rocks because of the humidity we have here. So forget about using garlic powder if you live on the east side of the Big Island, so, or even East Maui, too, for that matter. Randy, so, uh, is, excuse me, is that a teaspoon or tablespoon? That's a teaspoon. Teaspoon. Yeah, I said in, in here in the recipe that I had make it, made a mistake. So it's teaspoons each of granulated garlic, white pepper, and salt. And I'm going to add those right inside here. And then I have a sweetened mango puree. And this is a, a nice mango puree that's been cooked down and sweetened in very, very smooth consistency here. And I have here is a half a cup of this, four ounces. And I'm going to add this in here. It's again a nice unique flavor. So you're looking at, when you get into this dressing, you got the oil and the vinegar and the spices. And you can add just about anything else to it to suit your flavor. You could do um, any type of fruit you have available to make this nice dressing here. Then what I have here is peanut oil. Once again, I, I'd use peanut oil almost exclusively at the restaurant in all of our dressings other than Italian dressing because of uh, the crispness it brings to the, to the food. It, it doesn't overpower again. It, it, it lets the main ingredient speak out loudly without talking too loud over it. So I'm going to add two cups of peanut oil here. And then all we're going to do is we're going to blend this. And it will continue to want to separate oil and vinegar, do that kind of thing. And I have here, this is my favorite toy, this is a hand blender. And this thing is so sweet to use. You just get in there. Now that was a real easy dressing, wasn't it? So, so that's our dressing. And it, it's going to have real nice flavor to it. So now we're going to assemble a salad, very simple. And I want to get the point across that Base your salad on whatever ingredients you have. What I have here, just going to start one plate, is I have a wonderful salad mix from Glenwood Greens up in Glenwood. And if you look at this here, it's got really nice, really nice greens on it. If I hold this cutting board up, all everyone in the class can see. It has real nice color to it. It has a real nice different flavors. It has really nice, just everything about it really adds a diversity to the dish. So, and I've always, I was talking to Jack earlier, I, I've always uh, liked a salad mix that stood up to the ingredients on top of it. You didn't just, you know, 
in iceberg lettuce has its place in the world for certain things, but it's kind of bland and it doesn't really stand up to what you put on it. It gets kind of overpowered. So what I'm going to do is get a good, just a good helping of salad on there. But actually, you can use any kind of lettuce. You can for use this any kind of lettuce salad. This is just a general, like a good gourmet lettuce. And I know the KTA stores and the Safeway stores, they're all selling now packages of gourmet lettuce. And it's just a good mix of lettuces. The, the benefit we have happening here in the Big Island, and it's happening across the state now, is there's a lot of small farmers. The guy who grows this for me um, grows for just three or four restaurants, and that's it. And that's all he does. This pan is nice and hot. So I'm just going to lay a little the ahi in here like this. And then I'm going to get this roasted garlic oil in a spray bottle. I love this stuff. And just spray a little bit of roasted garlic on there. And just to season. That's just going to start to cook. And the whole theory on fish is you want to cook it medium rare. You don't want to be overcooking fish. And Randy, that salad dressing that you made, how long will that uh, keep? I would say that would keep for um, a couple of weeks anyway. Maybe so you keep it in the refrigerator. Keep it in the refrigerator, keep it in a nice sealed container. And uh, I'd say that would keep for, easily keep for a couple of weeks. So you can make a good, this is a, you know, about a three cup worth of it. For a family of four, that's going to last for a couple meals. Unless they really, really like it. You know how the kids get, right? They come home from school. What's in the fridge, Ma? And uh, how long have you been in business now, Randy? I've been uh, open for six years now. Amazing. I actually amaze myself sometimes. I look, have we been around this long? I'm amazed at myself at, at how we've survived. And I think of all the things that have happened in the economy and on the island and in the world in the past six years. It's been pretty amazing. And um, we started as um, a very small menu, about six sandwiches, about four salads, you know, about 12 items on the menu. And every six months I get, I get itchy fingers and I want to add to the menu. So I keep adding 10 items there. And now we're up to like 70 items on the menu. It's like pretty stunning sometimes. And we do it out of a one-man kitchen. So that's almost done now. What I have here is a pan of different ingredients just to show some diversity of ingredients. Um, for this salad, we'll just do some fresh Maui onion. Just get a couple slices along the side there. And then we'll do some of these seedless Japanese cucumbers. And we put maybe some slices on that side. And then we get some diced tomato. And we just put some diced tomato over here on this side. And then we get the, this ahi is this tombo ahi, actually, the albacore. You see how this pan gave some really nice grill marks to that? Got the nice Xing on there. Is tombo ahi preferable over the yellow fin? Um, I like the tombo ahi. Uh, its price is really good. And its firmness, it grills up really nice. It's good on a salad. It's good on a sandwich. You know, you get some of the... Um, you get mahi-mahi or some of the other fishes, they don't grill up as well and keep their nice firm texture like this and keep their nice... So that's kind of the dress, that's kind of the salad right there. Then all I would do is just get a little bit of dressing and just kind of drizzle it over like this. Looks good. So there we go. That's a one real simple salad. And we were talking, it could have been done a lot faster if we were getting down to business here. So we got an extra fish here, so I'll just put a couple extra slices of fish on there. So tonight is uh, kind of vegetarian for the most part. For the most part. Yeah, for a non-meat eater, that's a great option. So that's the uh, tropical grilled ahi salad. It's a real simple. Okay, okay. the next one, we're going to go completely to the opposite end, is we're going to do a, a spicy beef salad with plum dressing. And we'll get another plate there, and I will find some more ingredients. Okay, what the mainstay in this item is uh, sirloin beef. And I got a really nice sirloin steak and uh, froze it slightly, put it in the freezer, just so it really firmed up so I could slice it into these nice little strips like this. So I got nice little eighth inch strips of sirloin steak. Uh, really well trimmed, re really nice meat there. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to get this other pan hot and we're going to put in the 
beef, and right when it gets starts, it's just going to cook really fast. Right when it starts to cook, we're going to add uh, some sauce, and uh, I got some green onions. Cook that down just slightly, just so it starts to thicken, and then we're going to just uh, put that right on top of some salad greens with a nice plum dressing. So the first thing we'll do, of course, is we'll make the plum dressing. Another container. We'll get this. Everybody can take home dressing tonight. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start with one cup of peanut oil again. Actually, you can use uh, almost any type of oil, but you, you prefer peanut yeah, oil. Yeah, you could get, get away with canola oil. And it's all your preference, so what you happen to have in the kitchen. You know, if you, if you have every ingredient and only have canola oil, don't make a special trip to the store. Uh, this one I'm using red wine vinegar um, because I want the, the more vinegar to stand out because I'm going to use plum sauce, and plums are, have a lot of sweetness to them. This recipe also has a half a cup of sugar. So I want that red wine vinegar in there. So that's a half a cup of sugar. And then this plum sauce is 3 quarters of a cup, which is 6 ounces. So we're going to wing this because that's a 10 ounce bottle. So 6 ounces is about... Just kind of eyeball it, huh? Yeah. It's about there. After 20 years in the industry, you know what you can wing it on and what you can't. That's why I'm not a baker. So on this, I just use plum, the regular old plum sauce from the store. Okay. And I'm not a baker because I'm not, uh, I've never been really good at the actual measure every little thing by every little ounce and every little. So I, I'm more just at, throw me in, that's enough, we go. So, and I'm putting in one clove of garlic crushed. I had more than one in here. So one clove of garlic crushed. And I got the oil, the red wine vinegar, plum sugar, and that's that. And then we'll just get our old hand blender again. Okay, there's our plum dressing. Okay, then for easy the, to make these dressings. These dressings it? are a breeze. It's people are, uh, you know, you get spoiled by going into the store and buying a bottle of salad dressing, but it's it's so easy actually to make salad dressings. Now you know on salad dressing there's some that says low fat. Uh, how do you make a salad dressing that's low fat? You le less oil, almost. You can get away with no oil if if you add enough other spices to go with some vinegar, you can get away with you can get away with no oil. So, it's, so vinegar and a lot of spices. Yeah, use a, a like a, a balsamic vinegar, which is uh, more acidic and more more power and flavor to it. Something like that's going to add a lot. What you're trying to do with dressing actually is dress the salad. You're not trying to make the salad. You're trying to dress the salad. Just add a little flavor to it, just to bring out stuff. If you're using a good diverse lettuce and using a lot of other fresh ingredients, you don't need a lot of dressing on it. You just need just a little enhancement to everything that's on there. So what I'm going to do here, this is a spicy beef marinade that's going to go on here. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to put a little of garlic oil in this pan. And then I got, in this marinade, I have shoyu, two tablespoons of peanut oil, two tablespoons of brown sugar, two tablespoons of crushed pepper, or teaspoons, and I have a half a cup of green onions chopped over here. So we're going to add... We're going to actually, we're going to add the beef first. We're going to add just enough for one salad. And my trusty fork. So we just want to get this beef just starting to cook. And I'm not going to use all of this sauce because this uh, recipe here would be for, um, I'd say about four portions. But I'm only making one right now, so I'm just going to add about a fourth of it. How did you come across these uh, various uh, salads, uh, Randy? Pardon? How did you come across these uh, salads? Did you dream them up yourself? No, or? a lot of times what I do is I get all these influences from watching the Food Channel, which we all do, watching A&E Network when they have their cooking shows, uh, talking story with other chefs. We have the Big Island Culinary Association, which is a collection of, of chefs here on the Big Island. And uh, we all hang out together and talk. And then always reading cookbooks and reading culinary magazines. And you just gather ideas. And the mango vinaigrette dressing, for instance, 
is it's just a plain vinaigrette dressing. And I, for this specific item, I thought, well, mango would be really good. It's out of season, but so I use puree instead. So, um, and this plum dressing, I found this in a, in a book and just altered it slightly to what our, my taste would be more like. It called, for, um, it called for rice vinegar in the original one. I added red wine vinegar when I tasted it because I wanted a little more robustness to stand up to the beef. The beef is kind of spicy. So that beef would be done right now. And then all we're going to do is add some salad here. Same kind of principle. And this one, I didn't put any garnishes on the recipe, but I'm going to add some nice carrot there. And I'm going to add just a couple of rings of onion. And we'll add maybe two carrot wedges there. I mean, tomato wedges, carrot wedges. Long day. And then all we would do is add a little bit of beef on top of it like this. And then once again we go with our dressing. Now Randy, that, that uh, serving that you have there, would you consider that as a single serving? Or? Yeah, this would be like an entree salad. I see. This is about the size of all the salads we have at the restaurant. Mm, pretty healthy. Yeah, so meals. I, I really don't believe in sending people home from a restaurant hungry. They came out, to, came out to get full. They should go home full. So, well, that's our spicy beef salad with plum dressing. Now, you said that you moved your restaurant? Yes, we took the bold, the bold move of actually moving a, an entire restaurant one block away. And we just did that actually today. So we opened for lunch. We closed early at 1.30. And we lock, stock, and barrel moved everything around the corner. So we were in the middle of the Hata building, back in the atrium of this uh, really beautiful old building. And um, I had an opportunity to actually move out onto a side street with frontage and everything. And I'm on Furneaux Lane now, which is right around the corner. Um, what's going into the Hata building is a wonderful marine center by the Department of Commerce and NOAA. And uh, they're putting a lot of money in the federal government and the University of Hawaii in Hilo is putting all this money into a, f a marine center with a whole aquarium and all this information about the Northwest Hawaiian Islands. So they wanted the space where my restaurant is, and we just kind of talked story, and I got an opportunity, moved around the corner, stayed in the same neighborhood. We downsized the restaurant, um, but it's, it's actually really beautiful. It's high ceilings and bright, and it, it's, we're really happy about the move. It's really exciting. It's scary, and there's a lot of work to do. Moving a restaurant, I, didn't, I had no clue what was involved when it came to county permits and everything else. I have to thank the um, Department of Health. Curtis here in Hilo was very patient and very helpful with the health department helping me get all through all those. And uh, the contractors from Hiriyama Brothers and Concept Construction and Hilo Mechanical were just phenomenal in helping me. Like I said, you had no clue. You know, you walk into a turnkey restaurant where everything's there, fine. You don't think, like, oh my goodness sakes. So. Well, we did a spicy salad there, and we're going we're gonna to actually keep with the spicy theme is we get one more plate going. So as ingredients disappear, we'll have more room up here. The next one's going to be a, a Cajun shrimp salad. And um, I got some, uh, you always see this uh, Ocean Garden shrimp on sale here at KTA in Hilo. You have the 4150. Uh, which relates to the size of the shrimp. It's 41 to 50 pieces per pound. So kind of small size, but that's usually you can get a five pound box of this for like 22 bucks or something, which is pretty, for five pounds. I mean, that's, and the trick is you thaw it just so it starts to break apart. Break it into like four different sections and put each one in a Ziploc bag and put it back in the freezer. You got like four meals worth there instead of trying to thaw the whole five pounds one crack. So, so Randy, why is a ca uh, cafe named Canoes Cafe. Canoes Cafe. Well, believe it or not, I'm a canoe paddler. So we, could, we came up with that name way back when, six years ago when we opened, when we were trying to, what do we name it? What do we name it? Well, what do I do the rest of my time when I'm not running a cafe as I'm out paddling? So uh, Canoes Cafe is pretty apt. I'm, you know, I'm the past president of uh, Kamehameha Canoe Club. I'm with Puna Canoe Club on the board of directors. And I also run the One Man Canoe Association, Hawaii Island Paddle Sports Association. 
we're the One Man Canoe Association for the whole island. And I'm the current president and uh, kind of direct all the races. In fact, we have a race this Saturday in Kona. And so I'm very, very much involved in canoe paddling. Uh, this past month when I'm trying to move a restaurant, it's kind of hard to actually get on the water, even though there was great surf out there. So, and how does one join your club? Well, for, um, to join any canoe club, uh, I know the University of Hawaii Hilo has a wonderful um, opportunity for um, students to get down to the beach and actually try out the sport. And they're down there, they have beautiful canoes, they have a beautiful halal, they got everything down there. And it's the, you know, the only one, it was the first one in the state from an actual educational college, university, that's going to have something like that. So maybe it's a beautiful thing down there to get down and see that and get a feel for the sport and whether you like you know, being out in the water. And, you know, it's like paddling isn't for everybody. Not everybody can sing, not everybody can draw, not everybody can paddle. So you've got to get out there and try it first and get out there and see if you can get in with the water and weep them, get you a bowl, and just weep them. So, and it's, it's, you're going to feel some people, you know, the first time I got on the water, I paddled when I was a kid, didn't paddle for 15 years, moved to the Big Island, got right back into it. Just love the sport, love getting out there in the water. You get out on this, outside this island, outside the breakwater, look back at Mauna Kea, and you get out offshore, you can see the, uh, you can see the steam coming up from the, from the volcano off there. It's just beautiful out there. So it's just nice feeling the flow of the ocean. So Can you get seasick from canoeing? No, actually, I find that because a canoe stays more with the flow of the water and you're with that flow, you don't feel it. I know it's a lot of paddlers on the Molokai to Oahu race. We get on an escort boat periodically. I see a lot of paddlers get sick on the escort boat get back in the canoe and feel better. In fact, many times in big seas, I feel safer in the canoe than I do in the escort boat because the canoe goes with the flow. The escort boat kind of has a motor and it's kind of pushing against the flow. So the, the canoe wants to go with the flow, ride with the tides, change with the weather and just go. So it's just kind of just cruising along within the swells, up the bumps, down the bumps. So I don't, I don't never got seasick from that. Okay. Speaking of seasick, we got shrimp. <laughs> so the shrimp not feeling seasick anymore. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I want to give this shrimp a nice little good um, Cajun seasoning. And, you know, I'm not going to say we're going to do a full-on blackened style, but um, we're going to do a slight Cajun seasoning. But this uh, dressing here is a little involved. But what I want to do first is just toss. This is a, just a regular general off-the-shelf Cajun seasoning. And it's got some pretty good kick to it. So I'm going to put about a teaspoon in this, about eight ounces of shrimp. And just kind of mix it around a little bit just to get a little coating. The shrimp is kind of moist already, so it's going to kind of stick to it. As opposed to doing a full breading, where you would actually go flour, eggs, you know, flour again with the spices in there. You know, that would be another way to do it. And then fry it. You're adding more calories. You're adding more fat. You're adding all that. This just gives enough little bite to the shrimp that you're actually going to taste the flavor. How much Cajun seasoning was that? On the shrimp, I just put just enough to season it. I just put a teaspoon on there. One teaspoon. Yeah, just enough to season the shrimp. So you want whatever, okay. just a light coating, and it's going to be personal taste. Now, you can buy this Cajun seasoning at the supermarket, right? off right? the shelf on the supermarket. Okay. So it's become so popular that they have it pretty much everywhere now. So I'm going to make a um, Cajun Thousand Island dressing. So it's, you could buy off the shelf Thousand Island dressing, craft whoever, which one you like, add some Cajun seasoning to it, and that's what you got. But I figured here we are on the show, and we're going to make all these things. So I, not fair that I do that. So I'm going to cheat on one other dressing as it is. So you can probably save a lot of money if you make your. You yeah, you dressing, could. If you right? keep all these ingredients in your kitchen, they're at your grasp. You can just kick them out and go. So what I have here is, I'm going to put first a half a clove of garlic. Okay, and that's minced, right? Yep, just chopped super, super, super fine. In this container, I have kosher salt. I have a quarter cup of chili sauce, which is a bottle right off the shelf. Heinz makes one, hunts everybody that makes tomato products makes a chili sauce. Um, two tablespoons of ketchup, uh, uh, one and a half tablespoons of minced onion, super, super, super fine chop, two, t two teaspoons of sweet pickle relish right off the shelf, and a half of a hard cooked large egg finely chopped, and ground pepper, which was to taste, so I put just a, I'd say a pinch. And is there then, any mayonnaise in there? Yeah, we get to the mayonnaise. Oh, okay. This, that's what's in this cup. Because okay. all that stuff I just read was in this cup. And we'll just kind of get all those. As the Thousand Island goes, that's the red. And then here's the white. So 
we got the mayonnaise. And uh, for salad dressings, like for our sandwiches at the restaurant, we make our own mayonnaise. I've made it on the show before. And making fresh mayonnaise is really easy to do. It's, it's a breeze. It's uh, two eggs, two cups of oil, two teaspoons of lemon juice, and whatever flavor you like put. Salt, pepper, whatever you like to do. So, but it's the two, two, two to start. Blend it with a hand blender and you got mayonnaise. But for dressings, fresh mayonnaise doesn't stand up as well. Fresh mayonnaise is, is it's made to be fresh. It's good for that day. Uh, whereas uh, Best Foods mayonnaise, which is the best foods of Hawaii, is the mayonnaise of Hawaii. I know Nally's has tried to sell mayonnaise in Hawaii and it doesn't go. So, and everybody else has tried to sell mayonnaise in Hawaii. And Hawaii is it's a best food state. And then I'm going to put in here two tablespoons of Cajun seasoning. So I'm going eyeball there. It's about two tablespoons of Cajun seasoning. And this one, since everything was all chopped already, we don't need to hand blend it. We just want to give it a really good stir here just to get the ingredients kind of mixing together. And you know what, darned if that doesn't look like Thousand Island dressing. Amazing, huh? Sometimes you wonder when things actually come out. Okay, and then on this side now, we'll get this pan back hot again. Will this dressing last uh, in the refrigerator? I would say this would last again a couple of weeks in the refrigerator. You know, if you look at the ingredients in it, when you want to know if something's going to last, look at the ingredients you have in it. If you make something with, say, fresh basil as your main ingredient, it's not going to last as long. Basil is going to start to turn brown over a couple of days. If you're making something with a lot of off-the-shelf jarred and bottles ingredients, that those are going to last a lot longer. They've been, you know, preserved. They've been everything that technology does to them to make them sit in the shelf is going to help them sit in your fridge for a couple of weeks. And I would, you know, say, you know, if it's been there longer. You know how we all do, huh? We take them out, we look. That's okay, we go. So, you know. So it's, it's generally the food is going to tell you if it's not good, pretty much straight out. So while that pan's getting hot, we're just going to start a little salad here. And I'm going to put some Maui onion slices. Love these Maui onions. But I've got to give, I gotta give a little kick to... Um, there's some, somebody in Waimea is growing sweet onions these days and doing a phenomenal job. These, uh, Ma, uh, these Waimea sweet onions are really good. They really, uh, they're fresh here on the Big Island, which is a big benefit, and they stand up real well. They're really sweet. You know, you can tell a sweet onion, if you cut it, you're not crying, and it's a sweet onion. So, but uh, we'll put a little of uh, the sweet onions on there. Put a couple of these shredded carrots on here. Then I throw a couple of tomato wedges on the back side. You know, just some nice color. You got the green. You got a nice plate that backs it up. You got some white. You got some orange. This plan is getting nice and hot. Well, I'm going to add, for Cajun cooking, I like to use whole butter. You got the solids in the butter actually adds to what you're doing. So I want to add a little whole butter. And let that, as soon as that melts, and we're going to get the shrimp in there. Like I said, we're not doing blackened. We're just going to give it a good little sear. Let that cook for a second. And I guess like with any seafood, you don't want to overcook it, right? No. Even shrimp, for that matter. You want to keep the shrimp, um, I, I'd say, more on the medium side. And it keeps it from getting too tough. This is what happens when you come on a show as a solo act. You, you don't have somebody behind you washing dishes. You got to kind of do it yourself. Yeah, because in my kitchen, um, it's, it's a one-man kitchen. You know, I'm by myself in the kitchen working, and it just kind of, the mizzen place is having everything prepped, everything in within reach, everything in front of you ready to go when you open. And usually, if something goes wrong during the day, I can usually trace it back to I, I screwed up somewhere and wasn't prepared. So it's a matter of just having everything laid out and one person can do an amazing amount of things if you're prepared properly. And my days off, I have someone really good, Leroy Villaverde, who does a great job for me when I'm not at the restaurant. And he works here at UH at the dorms as a cook when he's not at my place. So he's a really good guy, he's from Maui. So Canoes Cafe, is it more of a takeout or is it a sit down? Well, in our new location, we are going to be more of a takeout. In our old location, we had a huge, huge dining room in the atrium of the building. And uh, going now, what we're going to be is we're going to focus more on um, takeout and delivery. Because we do full delivery in all of Hilo. 
So what is your phone number over there at the Canoes Phone Cafe? number is 935-4-PUKA-7-PUKA. Okay, so since we're not going to eat this right away, I'm going to just kind of put a good, instead of putting it on top, just put a nice array of shrimp. Okay, when you're doing Cajun food, I've always preferred having a cream style dressing or a thicker dressing, as a, like a ranch dressing or like this Thousand Island dressing, because that's going to be spicy hot. So you want the, kind of the coolness of the dressing on your tongue to kind of uh, combat that. So all I would do with this is just kind of lace a little bit around the edge there. And if you do that, whoever's eating the salad can kind of bring it into the salad on their own, whatever they want. Instead of covering the salad with this dressing, they can kind of bring it into the salad as they're eating it on their own. So there's kind of enough there. And I would say maybe if you wanted to serve a little bit in a little dish on the side too. That's what we're calling our um, Cajun shrimp salad with a Cajun Thousand Island dressing. I'm getting hungry, Randy. It smells good. It's amazing what you can do with salads, huh? So we're getting there now. So now we're up to salad number four. Uh, this one is right off of our menu at Canoes Cafe. This is an oriental chicken salad. And this one is really easy. So we start out with a nice salad mix again. So Randy, uh, you've got sandwiches, salads, and what else do you have over there? We do Canoes? pasta. Pastas. We do stuffed potatoes. We do these huge stuffed potatoes. These things are like 40 count potatoes. They're 20 ounces big. They're massive. Now, if I were to call into ca uh, Canoes Cafe for a takeout, how, how much in advance do I have to give you a call? Um, five minutes for a smaller order. Big order, 10 minutes, you know, if it's the whole office, 20 minutes. So it's not like Subway where you're going to have to stand in line. No, you can call us and come pick it up, and a lot of people do that. And we do the lunch delivery, too, anywhere in Hilo. Sorry, those of you on Maui, not yet. Okay. Actually, not even Kona yet. So for this ori uh, oriental chicken salad, I'm going to make a sweet chili vinaigrette dressing. So it's similar to the mango vinaigrette dressing. But I have a third of a cup of sweet chili sauce, sweet chili sauce for chicken. They sell it in a bottle in all the stores. And I have two-thirds of a cup of rice vinegar again. This stuff keeps popping up. I have a tablespoon of sesame oil. Okay. I have um, a tablespoon of garlic chili. You know that really super spicy one they sell in the stores? Comes in that little bottle, stuff is kick. It adds just a little bit of bite to this dressing. This is our most popular dressing. This dressing, uh, this is, people keep telling, when are you going to bottle it? When I get rich, you can buy one factory. So, and we add two cups of oil to that. Two cups of peanut oil. Peanut okay. oil again. We get out our trusty magic wand. Looks Bingo. like that mixer is a, a must for salad dressing. It is a winner for salad dressings. You know what's good for too is you don't put it while the fire's on, but if you're making a soup, take the pot off, let it cool a little bit, and blend your soup right in the pot. Make it nice and creamy. Nice and creamy soup. Mm. Okay, here's all I do for this dressing, I mean this salad, is I get some mung bean sprouts, which are the most common ones you're going to find. Okay. And put that so on there. So the amount, if you like mum, mum beans, you put more on. If you don't like it, you put, put less, a little less. Right? Or, or not Usually at you're going to buy them in one, uh, what is it, a four ounce bag in the store. And then I put about six wedges of mandarin oranges. That's six or eight, sometime around there. Okay. <coughs> then I put, I got some boneless, skinless chicken breasts. That what I like to do at our place is I grill it slightly just to get some good flavor on it, then cover it, uh, cover it and bake it in the oven to finish it off. And cover it so it stays nice and moist. You still get that grill on it, but it comes out really nice and moist. So this is chicken breast and then slice it up nice and thin. So we just lay this chicken breast right on top of there like that. It's about one five ounce chicken breast. So did you say you you fried or roasted the I chicken? I grill it actually. Oh, grilled I grill it, it okay. first just to mark it and get a little flavor and then put it in a, in a covered pan in the oven and bake it to finish it off. And the covered pan keeps the moisture all inside of it and it comes out really, really nice. 
Okay, there's some sweet chili sauce on that. Then we add some almonds. And there's an oriental chicken salad. Mm. That one was too easy. And then the dressing at our place, we serve it on the side. So I'll leave that dressing up here. So do you have a signature dish over there at Canoes Cafe? Um, people always ask me, um, you know, what's our house specialty? And I would say just about any sandwich. Our sandwiches, is, is, we keep coming back to, you know, I have 75 items on the menu and about a quarter of them are sandwiches and the sandwiches outsell the rest of it combined. And that's, you know, that's kind of what we're known for. And it's, we do pastrami, we have a really nice Italian style roast beef, we have um, a honey baked ham, we have a smoked turkey, smoked turkey breast with avocado, an oriental smoked turkey breast, you know, so we have all these different, uh, all these different sandwiches that just, but you know, we have, that, one, that one's on the menu. I run a lot of these as specials. Well, it seems like one of these salads would probably fill you up. Yeah, that's, that's the whole idea. But then again, if you're a 6 feet 11 basketball player, Even that may not fill you up, right? Okay, well, the next thing I'm going to make is a chipotle pork tenderloin salad. Chipotle is, it's um, smoked jalapeno pepper. And the way I buy it is, um, I buy it ground from this company called Penzi's, a wonderful spice company. And uh, it, I get ground red chipo chipotle pepper. And what we're going to do is we're going to marinate the pork tenderloin. And what I have here is a little bit of garlic oil. I'd say um, a tablespoon. I'd say about three tablespoons of... Um, lime juice, and I'm going to put about a teaspoon of chipotle in there. Okay, you spell that C-H-I-P-O-T-L-E. Yes. C-H-I-P-O-T-L-E. Yes. And they sell chipotle in the store in the Mexican section in adobo sauce in a can. And I like this because this is very flexible what I can use this in. I can coat this on ahi and grill it and do that in a wrap or on a salad or in a sandwich. I can sprinkle this on chicken and grill it. I, you so know, what, what is the ingredients of that? Uh, it's it's just it? um, chipotle is, is a smoked jalapeno pepper. Oh. So that's all it is. So it's a smoked jalapeno pepper ground up. And I'll leave this up here. Everybody can, in the class anyway, TV, you can smell it. It's not. But... The dressing I'm going to make for this, this is where I said I'm going to cheat, is I'm going to make a, a Southwestern Ranch dressing. Okay, and, and you can get this uh, at Penzi's Spice at www.penzeys.com. But we don't endorse the companies, but just for the purpose of this dressing, I'll, I'll just mention that. Okay, what's next? Okay, I'm making a ranch dressing, and I'm going to add some southwestern seasoning also from Penzi's in here. This okay. southwestern seasoning is a combination of warm chili peppers and South American spices laced with a smoky hint of chipotle pepper. I sound like a commercial, don't I? Um, hand mix from salt, sweet ancho pepper, onion, garlic, tela cherry, black pepper, Mexican oregano, cayenne red pepper, cumin, sweet paprika, chipotle, and cilantro. This stuff is wicked. I go through bags of this stuff. Now, our secretary went to that website because she, she saw the website there, and there was only a, a buttermilk ranch and a Southwest seasoning spicy. Well, what I'm doing with the, this ranch dressing is all, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. This is what I said I'm cheating. Hidden Valley Ranch. This ranch is great. This ranch is killer. And I've tried making ranch dressings out of from, from scratch, Buku, because we sell it at the ranch dressing at the restaurant. I go Buku recipes. You know what? This one is great. This one is killer. It is good. It's, why mess with something that's good already? It's like Caesar dressing. I use Gerard's. Gerard's Caesar dressing, not to endorse anybody, but I'm going to endorse them. No sense reinventing the wheel. Huh? Yes. They have done a really good job already. So all, all it calls for is a cup of mayonnaise and a cup of milk. And all you're going to do is mix it up. And then you're going to have ranch dressing. One cup of mayo, and what was the other one? Cup of milk. And one cup of milk? Yeah. That's whole milk, or? That was... Yep, whole milk. 
That's what I put. Okay. And then I'm adding, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of Southwest seasoning. And I'm going to do is get out my hand blender again. And one more time, Randy, that was one package of, of the seasoning. Uh, no, that uh, the dressing mix. What did you call it? The, the oh, one? Hidden Valley. Hidden Valley. Yeah. And then yeah. I added some Southwest seasoning just to give it some kick. And that's that. And then what we're going to do is this grill pan is nice and hot now. I have this marinated pork tenderloin. And we're going to grill this. And <clears throat> the marinade was uh, chipotle, chipotle, garlic oil, lime juice, right? Yes. Okay. So chipotle, garlic oil, and lime juice. So. It's got some really nice. So it's just in, you want to marinate it not too long because the lime juice, the acidity in the lime juice will start to cook the pork or whatever you're cooking it in. So you just want to add it just enough to give it that little hint. It's nice because the lime juice has a little bit of, like I said, acidity to it and bite that kind of offsets the chipotle. It really has a really nice southwestern style flavor to it. Now, do you serve soup over there at the... Yes, we do. In fact, the last two times I was on this show, I made soup. Stayed away from soup this time, but I make all my soups fresh. We and do uh, what a, kind of soup? A nice do you make? Um, corn chowder that we have on the menu all the time. It's a fresh corn chowder, and then we have um, a vegetable soup of the day. I make almost almost exclusively vegetable soups, and I make them fresh in the kitchen based on we're two bl block and a half from the farmers market in Hilo, so I'm always going down the farmers market and finding whatever I can find fresh and making. Just soups are so easy to make. It, it amazes me. Um, how many people are using frozen soup these days? So soup, salads, and um, soup, salads, sandwiches. espresso is what we always say. Ah. So we have espresso, and um, soup, salad, espresso, pasta, potatoes, and one new thing that's coming on the menu next week is going to be pizza. Like I don't have enough items on the menu. I'm going to do these little lunch pizzas, and I have those with a soup or salad for a six and a quarter for lunch. And so. what about dessert? Any no, sweets? you know, I've tried desserts, selling desserts over the last six years on and off, and I guess we fill them up too much with lunch. Nobody has room no for dessert. Room for sweets, huh? okay. Yeah. What I did on this salad was um, I put red onion rings instead of um, Maui onion. A little more bite to them. Okay. And then I put um, tomato slices. It's a different, different look. So you, you don't leave Canoes Cafe hungry, huh? I would hope not. <laughs> I would hope not. Our sandwiches, uh, O'Keefe and Sons Bread Bakers is where we get our sandwich rolls from. And they're really nice large sandwich rolls and they're not sliced bread. And um, we uh, are very proud of those that we do. And our salad mix, like I mentioned earlier, is grown by Glenwood Greens. Um, he, Glenwood Greens, Alan Lip is a fellow paddler and he's where I get my salad mix from. He grows his salads up in Glenwood, which is a higher elevation, and his uh, kind of theory on that and his belief, and I agree with, is that growing in the higher elevation where it's colder, uh, you get a little more crisper salad green, a uh, longer shelf life. So your new location at uh, Ferno Street or Lane, um, that's the place that used to be the old bakery over there, right? Yes. The bakery was um, like one door down from where I am. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a nice little lane there. It's, there's um, a bike shop, and Honu's Nest is another restaurant in the front. And uh, there's uh, a barber shop. Barber shop kicks butt. I was in the wrong business. There's a line there all day. Okay, unlike the ahi, this pork, we're going to cook it all the way. And that's a tenderloin pork. Yeah, the really nice thing about pork tenderloin is it's, it's going to be really tender. It's, 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 it's almost like fork tender. So you're not going to be really cutting away at it. So. Mm, smells good from here. Okay, so we'll um, just let those grill up. You know what, I noticed there's a couple more shrimp hiding over here. There's a big class here. I want to make sure everybody gets some. 
going to have to cut it in 16 pieces, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where, where did you get your background, uh, Randy, in, in all of this uh, culinary art here? Well, it's something I've always been interested in. Um, I, I've been 20... Four, 25 years. I grew up in a, in a family with three boys and two working parents and you learn in that kind of growing up situation that if you want to eat mom and dad are working you better learn how to cook otherwise you're gonna wait. So, Good um, idea. So I was the oldest one so I was always the one doing the cooking. So I learned how to cook and also be, I was kind of a fussy eater. My mom always said well if you don't like what I put on the table go cook it yourself. Okay fine I'm gonna cook my own. So sorry. <laughs> I think I ought to give a final in this class and make everyone cook a dish at the end of the semester. That, maybe that would be... Okay, so this pork is uh, coming real nice there, so we'll just set mm. some nice pork tenderloin. I'd say for a normal portion, I'd put like three of them over there, but uh, this is a class size portion. So we'll put like all five of them right around there. Wow. So, that's what we're calling a chipotle pork tenderloin salad. Okay. So, our last salad for the night is uh, something I run as a special quite frequently. It's going to be a vegetarian chef salad. And when you think of a chef salad, you think of some ham, some turkey, some cheese, whatever. The, it's generally what the chef has hidden away. He's cleaning out the refrigerator once a week, laying everything out on the counter. What do I do with this? Like chef salad. Ooh. So, um... We've taken it to being something as a regular menu item, or a regular special. It's not on the menu, but we run it as a regular special. Um, before I lay out some vegetables on there, I'm going to make a salad, a salad dressing again. Surprise. Okay, and this is going to be a roasted red pepper dressing? Yes, it is. So we... Um, roasted red pepper dressing. Wow. Roasted red peppers are kind of like a hot commodity right now. Is it hot? No, they're not hot at all. They're, they're, not, they're sweet, actually. But everybody loves them. I'll tell you what, you get uh, some roasted red peppers and some Maui onions on a sandwich with some turkey breast. Ooh. Broke the mouth. Oh, that's the one. That's not even on the menu. We just run that as a special now and then. We actually call it the Tallahassee turkey sandwich. And only because one of my former cooks is from Tallahassee, Florida. And he was his favorite, so we call it the Tallahassee. You've got to so, come up with the name of a menu item somehow. So, Randy, were you in this business before you started Canoes Cafe? Yeah, I was, uh, back, to, back to, yeah, your other question is, um, I went to Kapilani Community College and then um, some other culinary schools along the way and uh, had a long career with TGI Friday's restaurants. Back in the 80s, I opened the, the one in Honolulu and then worked in Southern California. I'm originally from Honolulu, and I worked in California for TGI Friday's restaurants and worked my way up to um, kitchen regional manager and um, had a great career there. And then opened um, Rose City Diner in Honolulu, worked for Compadres, worked for Sunset Grill, worked for all these places. I ended up moving to the Big Island a few years back. And um, after a little trip through working in sales in the wine, uh, all wine department stuff, doing all sales, selling beer for a while. I was general manager at Fiasco's here in Hilo. And then uh, when that worked its course and the opportunity for uh, having my own place came up, I opened Canoes Cafe. It was uh, about three or four other restaurants before mine that failed and um, for various reasons. And um, that's why everybody tells me they don't know how I've done it for all these years. So what are your hours over there at Canoes Cafe? Um, the new location, they're going to be 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. We're actually doing extended hours. So um, we're going to do in the morning, we do what you call a cafe-style breakfast. Uh, we don't get into the uh, fried eggs and rice for $1.99. So I can't uh, compete in that market. So uh, I do like uh, breakfast sandwiches, breakfast wraps, breakfast panini. We have a breakfast pizza on the menu, do that kind of stuff. Um, pastries, espresso, coffee, muffins. So we do all that kind of stuff. So it's still a cafe style breakfast. Usually for a lot of people downtown, it's the, it's the kick in the butt of espresso that gets them going and less the big plate of greasy food. So um, 
Okay, but I'm, one cup of mayonnaise. Yeah, right? put one cup of mayonnaise in here for a roasted red pepper and, and uh, Parmesan dressing. In here, I have two tablespoons of chopped Maui onions. Okay. I have a half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, mm -hmm. the real French one, a, t a tablespoon of Parmesan cheese grated. Okay. I have um, a half a teaspoon of basil right here, fresh basil, and then a pinch each of salt, black pepper, and cayenne peppers. So I'm going to put the basil in there, and I'm going to get all of these roasted red peppers, half a cup of roasted red peppers, Maui onions, Dijon, Parmesan, all in there. So this is another kind of a thicker dressing, right? Yeah. So we're going to do the blend again. Surprise, surprise. do you change your menu or do you just kind of? About every six months. Um, I find that if I'm at a point where I'm getting bored, then maybe my customers might be getting bored too. So um, about every six months, I just, uh, I call it a, um, not a full menu change, but just a menu alteration is what I always call it. So we keep, in the past, we've maybe deleted one item and added six or seven or eight, and then deleted two and then added eight, and then deleted one and added nine, and just, that's how the menu's grown so much. So uh, of all of these salads, uh, which would you say is the most popular here in Hilo? Um, our oriental chicken salad is on the menu and has remained on the menu since I opened. And it's, it still sells. Still the test then. It still sells like nuts. Okay. So for this, this uh, chef salad, is I listed on my, on my recipe just a list of different vegetables and can be all of these or some of these or none of these or difference of these. It's the idea with the chef salad is just finding whatever you want. So what I have here is some um, daikon sprouts which are have some kick to them. They have, okay. you know, the daikon is that uh, mustard. Mm -hmm. So um, then I have clover sprouts. Mm -hmm. Then in here I just put them all together. I have some celery and then I have some um, slightly cooked zucchini, broccoli, and eggplant. Okay, and so. What I mean by slightly cooked is you would, for instance, boil some water, take the water off the heat, put the vegetables in for maybe 30 seconds, drain it, cool water, that's it. Um, you, want, you don't want to kill the vegetable. You just so want to. It's kind of like blanching it. Yeah, very light blanch, and not even on the fire. Take it off the fire. So we have some broccoli there, and then I go over here to my other vegetable bin. So we had some Maui onions. Kind of chopped up, uh, chopped up broccoli and sliced zucchinis and um, zucchini, eggplant, Maui onion, carrot, clover sprout, daikon sprout, celery. Uh, we we'll add some Japanese cucumbers, maybe in here for a color breakup. And then, of course, we add maybe some tomato wedges. So you got some eggplants in there, too? Yeah, I got a couple of eggplants over there. Okay. We got a couple of tomato wedges on there. So here's the, the whole theory of the chef salad is just a nice, like a nice meal for, a, like if you have a full vegetarian, that's the ticket right there. But actually, you can just, just about put any type of vegetable. Yeah, any type of there. vegetable. Okay. So as they uh, say, whatever sails your boat, whatever paddles your canoe, so... And then I would get this um, roasted red pepper dressing and maybe just lace a little on there. Mm. And you look at the color of this, just really the offset of color. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. Yeah, it looks good. I can see the whole class. <laughs> They're just waiting to dig in. Yeah, we'll actually line up all the dressings over here for the class when it comes okay. to eating time. And so that is the that's the six sixth and final uh, dressing and salad. So uh, can we go to question and answers? Uh, we can. Okay, so we come to that portion of the class where those of you in the viewing audience, and of course those of you here in the studio, can ask questions. I hope all of you jotted down some questions for Randy, and uh, the numbers are on the screen. The numbers are 974-7726 and 961-9046. So 
Uh, if you've been watching, uh, we are coming to you live from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here on the University of Hawaii at Hilo campus. And this evening, uh, we are featuring Canoes Cafe with uh, Randy Botti, the owner of the cafe. And he has prepared for us several different salads. Uh, and I'll just go down and uh, maybe uh, we can get the overhead camera to go over the various salads. And uh, uh, once we get them on the, we have a caller. So will the first caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. And I have several questions. Okay, good. First of all, where can you purchase the cast, the cast iron skillet with the grill in it? Okay, Randy, I know you got yours from your grandmother, but where can we I didn't purchase? get this one from my grandmother. The one I use at the restaurant all the time is the one I, that one, I don't even take that one out of the restaurant. That's a family heirloom. This one, I believe I got it from Walmart. Oh my gosh. Though, um, there's now, a we, place we in Honolulu. We don't endorse Walmart or any, but. Actually, I think I got this. Walmart has a whole selection of cast iron stuff, like chalk. Okay. So, but um, the executive chef store in, um, the Ward Warehouse in Honolulu oh, okay. also has a phenomenal selection of cast iron from small. I, I have the small one here. I have um, bigger ones. There's a flat one I have. It's a whole flat one for cooking French toast and stuff. Uh -huh. That one is really good. Hey, Randy, how okay. do you keep that cast iron skillet clean so it doesn't stick to the pan? I know there's no Teflon on that. Uh, the, the key to a cast iron skillet is don't wash it with water. Okay. Amazing enough as it sounds, when wa water is an enemy to a cast iron skillet. So mm -hmm. I have a scraper, like a paint scraper, with a nice wooden handle that cleans up really nice. And I scrape mine like you would a flat grill. And scrape it and wipe it with a paper towel, and that's it. When you first get it, there'll be directions with it to season it. And generally you season it, there's two ways. One is in the oven, where you're going to put um, vegetable oil and salt in it and just coat it really good with the vegetable and salt, then bake it in the oven for like an hour at 400 degrees. And that seasons it. The other way is to do it on the stove. Do the same thing with the oil and the salt on the stove. And actually, any time you wash it with water, you gotta go back and season it again. You gotta start all over like you just bought it new. So, okay, I think the caller has several more questions, so why don't we go ahead with the questions. Um, how much red wine vinegar did you put into the plum dressing? That was 3 quarters of a cup. Another question from Hilo? Um, yes, and the spicy beef marinade. I missed out on a couple of the ingredients there. Okay, we had um, a half a cup of sh shoyu. Okay. I prefer club shoyu. It's a little more kick to it. Um, two tablespoons of peanut oil, or any oil would work. Um, two tablespoons of brown sugar, dark or light. Two tablespoons of crushed pepper, which I believe I have my own personal stash of crushed pepper. And um, there was a half a cup of green onions that weren't put in the marinade, but were thrown in the pan at the last minute. Okay. The green onions will um, overcook and just turn to nothing if you put them in too early. Okay. And one more question. On the very last salad dressing, which you called roasted red pepper, mm -hmm. um, how much of the red pepper did you use in the dressing? About a half a cup. Half a cup. Okay. My personal taste, I'd use a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Mm -hmm. Bye -bye. My pleasure. Okay, well, thank you for calling from Hilo, and uh, I don't think we have a phone call, so I just want to remind you that we are coming to you live this evening from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library, and this evening we're featuring Canoes Cafe, and uh, Randy Boddy, the owner, has uh, prepared six different salads with six different dressings, so uh, if you want to know anything about salad dressings and salads, Please give us a call. And we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. I'm calling from Hilo. OK. And um, I, was, I had a question about the website. OK. What was it again? Canoes Cafe. Is that, was that the question? No, the website. Oh, the website. I'm it's sorry. I'm hard of hearing. <laughs> uh, let I'm me here. see. It's let me, let me get it for you. Penzies.com. Here, let me get it for you on the Elmo here. Uh, right there. Okay, can you, can we get the Elmo there? Yeah. www.penzeys.com. 
and then it and then it goes on like that. But when, once you get to www.penzies.com, mm -hmm. you should be able to get everything else. Oh, okay. And um, you'll find a wonderful selection of spices on there. I someone handed me a catalog once about four years ago from that place, and I've just been a loyal customer. A just unbelievable selection of everything from Italian seasonings to Cajun seasoning. Then they have a very hot Cajun seasoning. So the next, the we next would level find up. all the salad dressing recipes on top of there also? Yeah, salad oh, dressings okay. are there, the Southwest seasoning, they're all there. Okay, and then um, another question. Um, if we call for takeout delivery, do we have to pay for that delivery or is it free? You call for takeout delivery? Yeah. No, you have to. No, the delivery is free. The okay. food you got to pay for. <laughs> no, we have, we have uh, anywhere in Hilo, in any business area in Hilo and Keao, uh, no delivery charge and no minimum. Oh, okay. Uh, we ask that you order more than a bowl of soup. So what is the radius for the uh, deliveries? Well, we say any business area. So we try to stay away from residential because you end up going all the way to Waikeuka or you're going all the way to the top of the hill. Uh -huh. But we say any business district. So the industrial area, out to Shipman. Uh, we go to the schools in Keao all the time. Kiao uh, Middle School is ordering from us all the time. Um, so just Kalani Opu School is ordering all the time. So anywhere there, all the way down out to sh um, Shipman, I said, out to where Sea Brewer is. So any business area in Hilo. So on the website, it also has a menu on top of there too? No, not on my website. I have canoescafe.com, which just has our phone number and general information about the restaurant. But if you call, we can fax you a menu. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Bye -bye. Okay, thank you for calling from Hilo, and we have another question. Our caller, uh, could you let us know where you're calling from, and go ahead with the question, please. Yes, I'm calling from Hilo. Okay, and your question? Uh, I'm, I'm asking about your cookbook. Oh, okay. You have last semester's plus when is this semester's one going to be ready? Okay, this we're going to make another cookbook, but the cookbook will be ready at the end of the semester so June. this this semester ends uh what in may so hopefully by the end of may uh we should have the ag 194 x cookbook and of course what the was 194 semester i beg your pardon what was last semester last semester was the 194 w and you still have some we still we had to we ran out of the first batch, we had to do a second batch, and then we had to do a third batch. So the third batch just came in. I think we have about, uh, last I saw there were about 17, so okay. get your order in as soon as possible. And let's see what I'll do is uh, I'll get the Elmo back on. Let me see if I can get the Elmo squared away here. And if you ever have to get a hold of me, for cookbooks or for the course or whatever, uh, that's the way you can get a hold of me, okay? Okay, thank you. Well, thank you for calling right. from Hilo. And I was wondering, do we have another phone call? No phone calls, but I hear a phone. What about the people in the classroom here? We got any questions from the, okay. There's a, you press the button and when the green light goes on, press it, let it go and go ahead with a question. Yes. Okay. Um, Randy, I was always told that when you do a cucumber, you cut off the ends and you rub it and all this white foamy stuff comes out. What is that? I have no clue. <laughs> that is supposed to make the cucumber less bitter. So when you cut the end and you rub the ends, it's, it's supposed to make, uh, take the bitterness out of the cucumber. That's and what and when say. are you supposed to stop doing that? Because it seems like the more you rub, the more that comes out. Well, maybe uh, some of the callers out there, uh, our culinary uh, people in the audience, maybe if you know the answer to that, please give us a call and uh, uh, let us know. I use, I use strictly Japanese cucumbers or seedless cucumbers, and I find they don't have any bitterness. They actually have a sweetness to them, and I've never had any, any problem like that. And I use, we go through two or three of them a day. So. Okay, we do not have another caller, so I'm going to... Look, okay, question, uh, same thing, uh, right in the front here. Uh, I was just wondering about your uh, hours of operation. Yeah, we're open 8 to 3. Um, okay, and you deliver to Hilo, is that considered? No, the delivery hours, we do lunch delivery. Mm -hmm. So you call by, um, call by 12, 11 o'clock for the first run of deliveries, and then 12 o'clock for the second run of deliveries, and we just do lunch delivery. So okay. it's not an all-day delivery. But you don't deliver out here, huh? 
We do. Oh, we you do? do? We so. deliver on campus actually okay. quite frequently. Okay. So, uh, actually, um, the Kumo'o Hale is ordering like all the time. So okay. we have a map of campus up at the restaurant. So. Okay, students, uh, if you don't feel like cooking or if you don't feel like going to the other place, call Canoes Cafe. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Dr. Fuji. Yes. This is Harusu Joe. Hi. Hey. All the way from Kaneohe on Oahu. Hey. Yes, go ahead. You know, uh, you know that I was a uh, army cook, yeah. and we were forbidden to use uh, mayonnaise uh, in making salads, you know. It, it's uh, one of those no-nos because we were taught to keep our uh, soldiers fit to fight so they forbid it any kind of a uh, mayonnaise no and, mayonnaise uh, yeah and Boy, when that... i went to cook and bake school they, they stress sanitation you know th so things don't get spoiled and all that and during my I, by the way i was a 90 day one to cook that was 90 day uh, became a most of the army cooks <laughs> yeah, are like everything that, is 90 you know. days and uh, but on the last week we learned, uh, no offense to the army, though. Yeah, we learned how to cook. I uh, use, uh, they, you know, they say spam, huh? yeah. but there was no such thing as spam in the army. You know, it was it was a long type of can, and then it was painted. Baked yeah, that out. was luncheon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I remember. But uh, on that thing, they had the the word can meat, and uh, the word spam came out because yeah, I think it was the GI is always put uh, different names on the, their food. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to let you know how, that how, what kind of cook I was. <laughs> but I have a question for Randy okay. on that mayonnaise thing. By the way, uh, Randy, how long does your uh, dressing last without being refrigerated? Without uh, getting spoiled, that is, you know? Um, the the oil-based dressings, like the ones without the mayonnaise in them, uh, would, I would say easily last a couple of days without, you know, it depends on, like I said, if you're going to use um, dried spices yeah. and you're going to use vinegar and oil, mm -hmm. you can leave that out for weeks, I would say, because mm -hmm. you're not putting anything that's going to spoil in it. Ranch dressing has milk in it. That one got to be refrigerated. The ones with mayonnaise, once you open the jar of mayonnaise, it's going to start to separate. So, you know, I have three dressings here with no mayonnaise in them and it's only oil, vinegar, base. And these three would definitely last outside for days, oh, if not a couple okay. weeks. Uh, these these because, three cream ones. Because the army, the army always have old wife steel too, you know. We, we, because uh, they didn't, they, if they, they could spoil, uh, the probability, they, they won't let us use it. See. You called last time I was on too. Huh? You called last he, time I was on too. He's a regular, we, Randy. We, yeah. talk, we <laughs> talked about vegetable base. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, all you, I, I got to say about the dressing, Haruso Joe, is... Better safe than sick, so yeah. put them in the re reefer. <laughs> okay, now, Dr. Fuji, yes. to give your class uh, students and uh, your viewing audience an incentive to put in uh, 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 and, uh, a recipe in your cookbook, you know, that would be a, your, res your cookbook would be the perfect book to, for bragging rights, and they can say that they had published Recipes. Exactly. That's why. <laughs> By the way, I'm using all the, my uh, previous recipes, and I'm I'm using only my portion as a gift to people. You know, on, on my uh, different recipes. Well, we and, have uh, your hey, Haruso uh, Joe section in the cookbook in the 194W cookbook. Uh, but, uh, we but, have uh, your uh, section. It's coming out real nice, and uh, I'll send you one someday. <laughs> Well, and, if there's uh, anybody then, out there in the viewing but, uh, audience... What I'm doing is, I'm putting in the, on the last page all the 194, XYZ, whatever, <laughs> as, as a, as a pass them out. If they want more, some more uh, other recipes, they can order your books here. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> but anyway, the incentive is to teach you students as well as your viewers that uh, they, can, they, they can brag out and say that, Hey, I, I've had my recipes published. <laughs> that's, exactly. uh, that's a good incentive to make them send you their precious recipes. Huh? So that's all I have to say, Dr. Fuji. Okay, well, thank you very much for calling. We appreciate it. And if there's anybody in the viewing audience who would like to share an original local recipe with us, uh, we would appreciate it if you would send it in. 
and we will include it in our 194X cookbook. So if you have a good uh, local recipe out there uh, that you want to share with the, uh, the state of Hawaii, uh, send it in to us and we will put it in the cookbook. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Um, I'm calling from Mountain View. I'm sorry, I can hardly hear you. Go ahead again. From Mountain View. And Mountain I wanted, View. Yeah, and I wanted to know how much is your um, cookbook? Okay, well, we're not supposed to say on TV, but since you called, uh, it's uh, $15. And we can buy it at the lower campus? Yeah, if you, if you come to campus, if you come to campus to the college, uh, you can purchase it for $12. And I wanted to know, um, is the new cafe going to be open for dinner also? I beg your pardon? Is the cafe going to be open for dinner also, Randy's Cafe? The campus? No, Canoes no. Cafe. No, uh, we're not planning on opening for dinner right now. Uh, we t dabbled in some uh, special di speciality dinners about a year ago and had, you know, mixed. People love the food, but like downtown Hilo, if you don't have a liquor license, which I don't and don't want to deal with, then it, it's a lot of people want something to drink with dinner, alcohol. So, um, but we are going to dabble in a few nights. I know February 1st, that Friday night, we're open because the store two, down, two doors down from us is doing an art night. So we're going to do, I know the first Friday of every month will be open at night. And we may do some things with the Palace Theater in conjunction with them and open the nights they're open. So, but I, I never say never. Okay, does that answer the question from Mountain View? Thanks for asking. I guess it did. Thank you very much for calling. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Yeah, Hilo. Okay, and your question? Uh, what was the number? For Canoes Cafe? Yeah. Okay, uh, Randy, I jotted that down somewhere, but I Nine lost three it. 935-4-PUKA-7-PUKA or 935-4070. Puka Puka? Yes. 935-4-Puka-7-Puka. Oh. oh, you guys serve rice too? No, we don't, do, we don't do rice. We do everything but rice. Oh, okay. But you know what? Honu's nest around the corner. He does his cuisine, which he does Japanese food, and he does rice and all that. And I'm good friends with Ben, the chef there. So he's going to do his thing, and I'm going to do my thing. Because not everybody eats the same thing every day, and not every husband and wife can eat the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So okay. the, the guys can come over to my place and have a nice big pastrami sandwich and send honey over for her bento box. You guys can both grind. So. Oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Puka seven, eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for calling from Hilo. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Yes, I'm calling from Kauai. Okay. Uh, I have a question for the gentleman there. Okay. Uh, when he makes his uh, corn chowder, mm -hmm. does he put uh, bacon in it? Is it, uh, I, what I do, mine, I fry my bacon before I put it with the corn chowder. How does it do his? Sounds good. Well, I've made my uh, corn chowder on the show before, the first, couple, first time I was on it. And what I try to, I do is a, basically a vegetarian corn chowder, though you would never know. And uh, the only thing non-vegetarian is the cream. What I do is I do uh, roast the corn first, and then I do... Uh, carrot, celery, onions, and I saute the vegetables till they start to caramelize, and that really brings the flavor out. And then I mix the corn in with that, and I use a vegetable broth, a good strong vegetable broth, and simmer that until uh, it starts. The vegetables start to soften. Then I add about three large potatoes, diced small, cook that so the potatoes are soft, and then thicken it, and add the cream, and then it comes out. We've had it for six years on the menu. I've never needed to change it. So okay, there's no bacon you. in mine. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Does that answer the question from Kauai? Yes, it does. Okay, well, thank you for calling all the way from Kauai. And uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Happy New Year, Dr. Hi. This must be Pat from Honomu? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Can I have the dressing for the oriental chicken salad, please? Okay, Randy, you want to go over that? The um, yeah, this is on our menu at the restaurant, and it is, it is our most popular dressing. It's um, for one little batch like this, it's a third of a cup of sweet chili sauce. It's the one you buy in the store, sweet chili sauce for chicken. There's a sweet chili sauce for fish that's different. It's a lighter color. Get the one for chicken. Two-thirds a cup of rice vinegar, mitsukan is a standard. A tablespoon of sesame oil, 
a tablespoon of the garlic chili sauce, the Korean one, and then two cups of peanut oil. And blend it either in a blender, in a food processor, or with a hand blender. You're going to get the same result. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thanks for calling. Okay, well, thank Bye. you very much for calling from Honomu here on the Big Island. And uh, I don't think we have a caller. Just like to remind you that uh, we are coming to you live from the television studios located here in the Mookini Library on the University of Hawaii at Hilo campus, and you're watching Focus on Agriculture, Agriculture 194X. And this evening we're featuring Canoes Cafe with Randy Botti, and uh, <clears throat> he has prepared for us several different uh, salads and salad dressing. He's an expert at making sandwiches and soups and dressings. So if you have any questions, give us a call. The numbers are 974-7726 and 961-9046. So uh, what about the classroom? Anyone in the classroom? I'm sure there must be someone in the classroom here with a question. Do, great, we have a question right here. What is the question? Hi, uh, what are the ingredients for the chipotle pork? Uh, marinade? Okay, the marinade was real simple. It was um, garlic oil, which I use um, McCormick's roasted garlic flavored oil. Buy it like this. It's real simple. I, I use this product on just about everything. Um, or you can make your own, or you could use just plain vegetable oil. And then lime juice. Lime juice has a different flavor than, than lemon juice. It's uh, less tart. And then, um, then we put the chipotle powder, which you could use cayenne pepper powder and get a similar result. So. Okay, does that answer the question? Yeah, the I chipotle so. was kind of to taste. Now, while we're waiting for some callers, I, I've got a few questions for you, Randy. You know, uh, with that uh, cast iron skillet, can you fry an egg without, you know, breaking the egg yolk, you know, if you want yes. to have sunny side up? Yes, you can, if you have a properly seasoned. Um, the, what I find, what actually, what I found about cast iron skillets is, the old ones from Tutu and Auntie and everybody else, they have a smoother surface on them. And they're better for cooking eggs. And that's the one I use at the restaurant. I notice the ones you buy now off the shelf, a kind of a rough surface to them. So when I buy a new one, actually, I've gone and gotten, gotten an electric grinder and grind it down till it's smooth, completely smooth inside. And then it's perfect for cooking eggs. Scrambled eggs, you can do, you know, you can do sunny sides. You can do over easies. It's Guarantee not as easy. no broken yolks, huh? No broken yolks. OK. Take you up on that. <laughs> we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? I'm calling from Kauai. Okay. Um, you know the recipe with the mango puri? I beg your pardon? The, the mango puri. Yeah, the, the mango vinaigrette. Yeah. Um, how do you make the mango thing? I bought off the shelf a mango puree. At where? At KTA here in Hilo. And then um, thickened it and sweetened it a little bit added some sugar, and thicken it down to, uh, you know, you could, you could use a mango jam, and it would come out almost the same. It would come out really good with mango jam. Like oh, right no. now, it's not mango season. If you have fresh mangoes, just puree that, and then cook it down with a little bit of water added to it and a little bit of sugar, and you're going to get a really nice fresh mango dressing. So the one you bought at KT is in any store? Yeah, I was in the store. It was right in the... Um, Safeway. Yeah, Safeway might have. Okay. Or Big Save. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Bye. Okay. Well, thank you for calling. And uh, we don't have any callers. We have approximately four more minutes for phone calls. So if you have a question for Randy, uh, please give us a call. The numbers are on the screen. Uh, another question, Randy. Now, if I was having a uh, kind of a luncheon party or something and I wanted a whole bunch of... Uh, sandwiches can i call you up and uh, could you deliver a whole bunch of sandwiches to me and uh, how much time would you have to give uh, would i have to give you all, all i've really asked for larger orders of say 10 or more would be one day's notice and i do a lot of the uh, office caterings we will do sandwiches on and wraps are very popular in office caterings and we do a big platter and we'll just do an assortment of sandwiches with sweet, sweet potato salad and carrot sticks instead of potato chips and do it on a big platter or some offices, uh, they have an all-day meeting, and they take lunch orders in the morning. They pass the menu around, and then call us, and they give us the names of who ordered what. We write their name right on the package. 
on a separate package and lay it all out. So we can do all that kind of stuff. And once again, like I said, for larger orders, because our, our bread is baked fresh every night. Right now they're baking my bread for tomorrow. So it's baked fresh every night. I order the bread for tomorrow, and I have a kind of a set amount I order. If you call with a 10 sandwich order, that could wipe out all my bread, and I don't have any bread for the rest of the day. So I very rarely will say no, though. If you call at 9 o'clock and you need a big lunch today, most times I'm going to find a way. I'll call O'Keefe and buy some bread off his shelf and, and work it out. Okay, Randy, we have two phone calls, so we'll take the first caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? I'd like to know where he purchased the mixer from. I beg your pardon? The I'd like to know where he purchased the mixer from. The uh, mixer? Oh, uh... The hand where? mixer, Long's Drugs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't endorse any supermarket or any stores, but you can I try my it. best to support local retail establishments. Occasionally a Walmart slips in, but you know. Long's Drugs, we all grew up on Long's Drugs. So. Okay, does that answer the question? I guess it does. We have another caller, uh, could you let us, uh, do we, uh, we have another caller, so could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Hello, you're on the air. Did we lose our call? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Where are you calling from? Oh, Kauai. Kauai, okay. Um, I'm calling in regard to chef salad dressing. Your roasted peppers, how do you do that? Okay, um, you can make them fresh or you can buy them in the store in a jar. Roasted red bell peppers. And all it is is bell peppers. And what you can do is you roast them with um, a little bit of oil on them and roast them in the oven until they're soft and you're going to get the same thing. But the ones you buy in the store are usually from Spain and they're really, really good. They're nice and sweet. They sell it in the, say, the relish section of the store. It's usually in a okay. small jar. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling from Kauai. And I think it's uh, 827. We have another minute. Do we have another question from the classroom? You mean to say no one has a question in the classroom? They're all just hungry. Mm. Okay. Uh, Randy, why don't we go over, uh, I wonder if we can get an overhead shot of the various salads again, and maybe as we pan, can you uh, see the monitor and describe it, uh, Randy? Okay, well, we had the uh, tropical, well, that's the Cajun shrimp salad you're looking at. Then you have the oriental chicken salad, which is on our menu. That there's a Cajun. Then we go down to the tropical grilled ahi salad with a mango vinaigrette dressing. Then we go okay. across to the spicy beef with plum dressing. Then we go across to the grilled pork chipotle salad with the Southwest Ranch dressing. Then we come across to the chef salad, the vegetarian chef salad with the roasted red pepper dressing. And of course, all of these salads are available at Canoes Cafe, right? Uh, they're not all on the menu right now. Okay, uh, I so run a lot of these as specials. Well, so some Only of these the Oriental are, Chicken is on the menu right now. These are focus on agriculture specials. These are focus on agriculture specials. And those of you in the viewing audience, they will be in our new cookbook. So it's a must to get that new 194X cookbook. And if you haven't got, uh, purchased the, the W, well, give us a call. Well, we've come to that portion of the class where uh, we've run out of time, and I would like to thank uh, Randy Boddy for coming over here from Canoes Cafe and uh, sharing all these uh, wonderful salads with us and the salad dressings. We hope that you'll join us next Thursday evening. Next Thursday, we're going to have Island Naturals uh, Food and Deli come over here, and they're going to do some real good, uh, nice, organic, natural uh, vegetarian dishes for us. So for all of you who are vegetarians, we hope that you'll join us next Thursday evening at the very same time and same channel. This is Jack Fujii saying thank you for watching and have a good evening.